What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's episode we're going to go ahead and address the car audio on Project CB9. Right now I've got no sound whatsoever coming from the rear speakers. Now a few episodes in the past we replaced the front door panels. The front door speakers are totally deteriorated and those things were removed. So we need to go ahead and install some six and a half inch speakers in the front doors, replace the head unit, and hopefully we got some car audio. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to install a radio in front door speakers into a CB7, CB9. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's the Polk Audio 6.5s we got from a junkyard yesterday. These came out of a 1995 Honda Accord that were in the front doors. And if you can recall in one of the previous videos, when we replaced these door panels, the OEM speakers were basically disintegrated inside there, so I basically removed it. So there's no current speakers in there for the time being. I want to keep the cost down, so these junkyard speakers for 20 bucks weren't a bad deal whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead, remove this door panel. So we'll go ahead and install these Polk Audio 6.5s. We'll go ahead and turn on the ignition and see if we have any sound, but beforehand, when the old speakers were in there disintegrated, and I've got some ceiling speakers in there as well. I had no sound whatsoever, so I don't know if it's a bad OEM head unit, but I guess we'll find out after we install these door speakers. So let's go ahead and move this door panel. So we've got a screw cover right here. So pop the cover off. There's a Phillips head right here. Go ahead and pop this little cover off here. There's a Phillips head right here. Go ahead and take this handle, push it forward, pull it out a little bit, disconnect the handle. Go ahead and remove this little pop rivet right here. Remove the side view mirror cover. And this door panel should pop right off with all the clips. And don't forget to disconnect the electrical for this little light right here. Okay, now that the Polk Audio speakers are fully installed in both doors, let's go ahead and check to see if these things work. Well, I got this radio set on my local radio station, which I never have trouble picking up. And I've got no sound whatsoever coming from the rear ceiling speakers or the door speakers. So, okay, so this confirms my theory that this OEM radio is officially dead. I'm getting no sound whatsoever. So the only course of action is to replace the head unit. So. We're gonna have to do that later on. Okay, here's the head unit we'll be replacing today. This is the OEM factory cassette player, and I've got the radio code in the glove box. So I've entered that into the radio and it turns on. And when I turn it on, obviously the aerial antenna on the quarter panel raises up and I've turned it to my local radio station that I always get reception with and I have no sound whatsoever. 
I know that there's speakers in the back, but there's no speakers in the front. So there's still no sound coming from this. So I believe this is a dead head unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to remove this head unit, replace it with a new one and reinstall it. So let's go ahead and show you the steps. So first thing you wanna do is pull out the ashtray, push down this flap and pull it all the way out. Okay, now inside this cavity, you have a Phillips head screw, which attaches this piece of sheet metal. You wanna remove this Phillips head screw and there's two screws on the top here. So as you can see, there's a Phillips head screw right there and another Phillips head screw right there. So you'll remove those three Phillips head screws. So once we remove those three screws, this piece of metal will come right out, disconnect the ashtray light, and we'll go to the next step. And here's the tools I'll be using, a long Phillips head screwdriver and a right angle Phillips head screwdriver. Now go ahead and use your right angle Phillips head screwdriver and remove this top left screw and this right hand screw and use your long reach screwdriver to get that screw right there. Okay, now that the ashtray frame is removed with the three Phillips head screws and disconnected the ashtray light, we can actually move on to the actual radio frame. Okay, so inside this ashtray cavity, you should have two eight millimeter bolts. You can also use a Phillips head screwdriver. So there's one on the right-hand side and one on the left-hand side. The left-hand side of mine was left loose and that was an accident on my behalf when I reassembled things. So let's go ahead and remove this eight millimeter bolts and don't forget your left side bolt as well. Okay, so that 8mm bolt is pretty loose. Ended up having to use an extended 8mm socket right here with my extended reach ratchet. So that helped a lot. And getting access inside that cavity, it's just very, very small. If you want some more access, you could probably remove the center console, but that's more, a lot more work, but that's just up to you. So now this head unit should pull right out. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it's pulling right out. And then we'll need to remove an antenna connector on this side and the main wiring harness on that side. And this radio should fully pull right out. So let me go ahead and get that disconnected. Okay, head unit is officially out. This is your main dash harness. You basically press on this tab right here and pull it out of the radio. And this right here is your antenna adapter. This basically just pulls straight out. Now here's our factory head unit that is most likely dead. And here's the bolts on the bottom that hold it in the bracket. So I just basically kind of put them in for illustration purposes. So you wanna fully back these things out before it can fully pull out of the dashboard. And this is where the dash harness plugs into. And that's where the antenna harness plugs into. So now we can go ahead and start prepping our replacement head unit. So let me go ahead and show you guys what we have in order here. Okay, here's the radio that I'll be installing in the CB9. This is a temporary basis right now. I got this radio from a 1990 LX white sedan, if I can recall. And I believe the yard only charged me $15. Now this radio was high end back in the day and probably expensive. This has got BBE sound processing, four volt pre out for the amplifier outputs. And I think this thing looks pretty good. I tested this thing on the bench test. So let me go ahead and show you that footage.
All right, thanks again to my friend Russ and owner of Flat Out Suspension. The dash installation kit has arrived for the CB9 and we're going with a Metra 997898. And this is for Honda Acura from 88 to 06. And there's basically just one main piece we're gonna use in this kit. And this is the main piece we'll be using. As you can see, there's multiple tabs on the top, side and bottom. And the radio slides into this opening right here. And you got a little storage pocket right below it. Okay, according to the instructions here for a cord 90 to 93. Here's the piece we'll be using right here. As you can see, it's calling for clip C and clips H. So clip C is here on the side. Now these clips are indicated with a D and E, but the C is not indicated right there on the side. But if you can look closely on the back side, there's C right there. So we're gonna keep this clip. We're gonna snap off the rest of these other side clips. And apparently all the top clips disappear as well. And it's saying the H clips remain on the bottom, but there's no indication for H. So I'm gonna presume it's this one right here. So we're gonna snap off this, snap off that, and the only clips to remain on the bottom here is this clip right here and this clip right here. So just to reiterate, it says cut and remove all the mounting clips on radio housing A, except clips C and H. Just number C and H, that's all we need. So we'll start breaking some clips off here. Now the first step of this process of mounting this Alpine radio into this dashboard adapter is there's this metal sleeve right here. We need to slide back the metal sleeve. We're going to slide the metal sleeve into this opening right here. And as you can see on this radio, there's multiple metal tabs. So once the sleeve is inside this plastic adapter, we're going to be bending back some of the metal tabs and that basically locks that metal sleeve in position. And then once that metal sleeve is in there, we can go ahead and take the radio and just slide it into that metal sleeve and it should lock it in and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the wiring aspects of the car radio. This is the wiring harness that came with the radio itself. So this plugs into the back of the radio. I've already stripped the wires down. And this is a custom wiring harness right here that is vehicle specific. This actually plugs into the dashboard wiring harness so you don't damage your car's wiring. So we're basically gonna join this harness to this harness right here. And before we do so, we need to take shrink tubing and put a piece of shrink tubing on every single wire before we go ahead and twine it together and solder it. Otherwise you will forget. Now here's the tools and equipment you'll need. Some shrink tubing, wire cutters and strippers, something to hold your wires while I solder them together, a lighter to shrink the shrink tubing, solder, and a soldering iron. Now some of the wires have multiple colors. So you've got a gray with a black stripe and you've got a solid gray. And you've also got a white with a black stripe and a solid white. Those are basically speaker wires. Now the orange here is illumination. The red is for battery. Yellow is for memory. Orange is for illumination. Blue is for power antenna. And black is ground. And then you got black and green and a solid green. And you got black and purple and a solid purple. So these are obviously speaker wires also. So we'll go ahead put some shrink tubing on the wires, twine them together, and then we'll solder them and make the connections. And then we'll take a lighter and melt the shrink tubing and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and get this wiring harness put together.
Okay, here's the wiring harness that we soldered up the other day. Now this clicks into the radio and this goes into the dash harness right here. Now with this blue and white wire, this is the remote turn on right here. Now when I had the carpet out of the car, I went ahead and ran all the stereo component wires and this is the remote amp turn on wire. So basically when the radio turns on, it basically sends a signal amplifier to actually turn on itself also. So the amplifier is not always on when you have the car running. And then this is the RCA cables that hook up to the back of the radio and into the amplifier. So I went ahead and ran all the wires, saved me the trouble. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this remote amp turn on wire right here. I'm gonna go ahead and solder it onto this blue and white wire right here. Now, before you go ahead and start soldering, make sure you have proper ventilation or at least a fan blown through the area because those fumes are very toxic. So value your health and safety first. So let's go ahead and get this wire soldered up. Okay, now that we have the amp remote wire soldered in shrink tube in position, the next step, we need to take this wiring harness and we need to go ahead and plug it up into the dashboard wiring harness. And then once that is done, we'll go ahead and take this sleeve assembly right here and we'll go ahead and click it in position. Now before doing so, go ahead and take all the wires that you can, pull them through the sleeve as you're pushing it into the dashboard and this thing should click in position. So let's go ahead and take care of this. All right, guys, we're getting very close here. So this harness right here plugs into the back of the radio onto this part right here. These are the RCA cables for the amplifier. I'm not sure if I'll run this radio with an amplifier and subwoofer in the back later on down the road, but might as well plug them up. And those go right into these RCA inputs right here. And last but not least, got this antenna right here. So this antenna plugs into the back of the radio right here. There's where your antenna plugs in. Okay, let's go ahead and make those three connections and then we'll carefully feed the wires back into the dashboard and then we'll put the body of the radio into the sleeve and it should click right in position and let's go from there. Okay, this is a different plan of action here. I was trying to actually put the adapter and the sleeve in there and then feed the wires through and then plug the radio in and then click it in position finally. That wasn't working out due to the fact that the antenna adapter wire was so short, I couldn't reach back there and plug it into this radio. So I went ahead and took the sleeve and the plastic trim, pulled it back out, put the radio body into position and then basically fed it through slowly and I was able to reach behind there with the antenna adapter and plug it in, but everything is now secure. Looks pretty good. Okay guys, I see the light in the tunnel. So let me go ahead and show you guys what the final steps are. Now the first step is to get your trim ring. This has some locking tabs on the top and here on the bottom. Let's carefully click that in position. And last but not least, put your face plate on. And we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And for the final step, let's go ahead and put our ashtray retainer back in position. And then we'll go ahead and slide the ashtray back in. And we'll have this dashboard all buttoned up. All right, guys, this is a big moment of truth. Let's go ahead and turn the ignition key, turn that radio power on, and see if we got sound. Fingers crossed. Now, I might have to mute this part of the video due to copyright infringements. But if you see me, give a thumbs up and a big smile on my face. You know it's successful. 
So let's go ahead and turn that key and see what happens. Well, all right, guys, we finally got some tunes installed on Project CB9. Got the Alpine head unit and the Polk audio front door speakers installed, both that we got from Junkyard. Now, the front door speakers, they sound just all right, but it'll get by for the time being. But at least we have AM FM capability with the compact disc. Now, I want to give a big thanks to my friend Russ at Flat Suspension for the dash kit for Christmas. Thanks again, Russ. Now, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving with your friends and family. If you guys like updates on Project CB9, Please give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for channel updates. Have a great day.